Kliaski. Ah, yes, yes. Shak Mamadiarov. So this was a, a very interesting opening. Yeah, we had Stanislav here, but G3. Petrov against Grandilius, port 5. Ah, yes, uh, as we were saying, uh, Petrov is another one of the, the international masters who is doing quite well in his quest to get a, a GM norm here, being very solid this tournament. So Grandilius still creeping up after the rough start. Um, Looks Nikita like a very was theoretical was line. Was white, yeah, and... Uh, oh, we discussed this actually ah, yeah, earlier. It's uh, it's the Grunfeld. We had, uh, we had a few Quite of those. Quite early, a very yeah. early round. So C6 is a solid option. He takes on C4, which is perhaps more active. C, uh, C3 was played. B takes C3, C5. Um, yeah, Grandilius is, I think, is a very reasonable uh, mm -hmm. theoretician. And he's been playing in the Grunfeld for, uh, for a very long time. Fits his style. He plays very actively, takes risks. So that's also why accidents can happen. Yes, did yes. we have this line exactly? Yes, we did. Yeah, yes, with yes. Uh, in the... Uh, very early on. Chapel of Mamet came. Or oh, now you're asking exact players, you see. Hmm. But, any, but this position has happened uh, an enormous amount of times in theoretical. This mm -hmm. is all still very well known. This will be six. Uh, and we've also had this position. And, and again, uh, in one game, we had this 95, rook c8, rook c1, and very, you know, trying to, to play against this. And in, th in this game, yes, it was Shabala versus Ciparino, if it was correct. Ciparino, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and Shabalov played D takes C and tried to play for that small edge. But uh, this game is going along more standard lines. Okay, Queen This is all looks very familiar still. Yeah. Rook C8, uh, Bishop to A3, C5. Yeah, as often happens in the Grunfeld, uh, Black isn't afraid to, mm -hmm. to sacrifice a pawn for activity and even go to go for an ending down a pawn. Here he has a lot of pressure, mm, uh, a lot of pieces, activity. the bishops are well posted on uh, aiming at the queen side. And let's see what he uh, did here, rook fd8, both rooks are on half open files, giving, uh, putting pressure on, on white. The fact that uh, Grandelius basically used virtually no time to reach this position. Yeah. Uh, and you do not go into an ending a pawn down unless you've had it at home, to be honest. Going back a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, actually, queen d3, 95 is more mm -hmm. common here. It's a very and obvious uh, logical uh, move. Isn't this yes, what yes. we had with, with the d-tech c5 in the C3. other game? Yeah. Uh, correct, correct. Something like this, yeah. And uh, we had this, rook fd8, <laughs> rook ad1, we have to uh, protect the pawn, 95. And well, ideas of knight c3, but white tries to create his uh, own ideas. And now knight c3. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, actually, this game is still following uh, the game that has been mm -hmm. played before, but uh, not by professional players. Mm -hmm. Still. Mm. Yes, we well, we have a. A very concrete problem here that our rookies attacked. Yeah. Uh, in, the in, in that game, uh, knight c6 was played. Yes, which is still a possible idea because uh, again you are threatening knight takes d8 and knight takes c7 check. Um, you'd think that if white knight c6 played, uh, the obvious move is rook d7 to protect the pawn in e7 to move your rook out of the way. And then I would have to actually move my own rook on d1. Probably. Well, we can't. We can't. It has to go to E1 almost. Yeah. Can't go to C1, unfortunately. I'm not going to A1 no. for obvious reasons. So therefore, I would have to go to E1. Yeah. And then the interesting idea would be to simply double... So C1 drops to this and A1 drops to the same move. So E1 yes, or, so or E1 T2. looks like virtually forced. And here, the most obvious move is simply to play rook on 7 to C7. Because the knight doesn't have, if you can force the knight backwards, I think that's a, at least something. And then I can start thinking about taking on a2 or something. I'm not sure where the knight goes now. Because it can't go to the preferable central squares. It has to move somewhere over to the queen side. Mm -hmm. And I think this must be reasonable for black. Yeah, looks like it. And the fact, like I said, the fact Grandilis is a very hard working 22 year old Swedish grandmaster who spends an enormous amount of time with the Grunfeld. He 
He's played this very quickly. He knows this is okay for black. Yeah. I, the fact that, <coughs> pardon me, the fact that the well-prepared Petrov has also played into this makes me feel that he's happy to, to get an equal position and uh, not really go for an advantage. Although, I, I would say that Petrov here is working quite hard to remember his, uh, his line. He's the one who has already <coughs> spent 25 <coughs> minutes and he's trying to remember his lines. Again, he's the one who played this against Grandilius' uh, Grunfeld. So I have to assume that he, he prepared some of this. And he's the one who played the slightly unusual Queen D3. So usually it's the person who plays the unusual move first, who in theory knows what he's doing. He's the one who prepared it that morning. I believe the line that we set, this, this position here, looks quite, uh, quite respectable for black. He has many ideas here taking an a2, maybe even bishop d5, getting rid of that uh, annoying piece, shall we say? Mm -hmm. And then if bishop takes, rook takes, something like that. I think that bishop d5 is always a common theme here. Okay, we have some moves, actually. Oh, no, 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 yeah, that's no, 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 we looked uh, at, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the current position, nice okay. c3, yeah. So I think that black is, is fine in the uh, analysis position that we chose. I think here, bishop d5, and then just taking with the rook, and hitting a lot of pawns looks quite, quite correct. Shall we, uh, Shall we have, have a, look a look at the rapport again? Yes, yes. Probably uh, the most interesting game of the round so far. So you're saying that if you play h6 and g5, you're automatically the most interesting game. Maybe you're just the most provocative game. The most uh, game. provocative uh, or original, yeah. Oh. h3. See, I think already... Uh, Grunfeld of Niels Grandilius. Yeah. yeah. Which was quite interesting. Swedish Grandmaster Nils Grandilis, who's recovered from his uh, earlier early mishap. early mishap, but he hasn't quite got to the high boards yet. And uh, he's playing, of course, uh, Nikita Petrov, who uh, yesterday had an incredibly interesting game with Aliaski. the great veteran, which he played this very, very big novelty. So you can see that, because he played it quite quickly, that he's doing very well uh, prepared. So we believe that uh, that uh, Nikolai Petrov is uh, he's wearing his beloved uh, shirt, as it were. Oh, I haven't noticed this. You uh, haven't noticed this? No. Has, has he been wearing it all tournament? Though? Well, he's been wearing it a few rounds. I must admit, I always get told these things. That That's a famous Russian variation, by the way. Which is? To wear the same shirt. Ah, uh, yes, when you're well, yes. like Karpov and. Uh, oh, no, I mean, at Olympiads, I always know. When somebody wears the shirt too many times because we have so many female players, there you go. Oh. And then they always seem to remember. And then you get the official wearing of the tournament shirt. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you wear the official tournament t-shirt, we know that you've run out of clean clothes. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So rook d2. So rook uh, d2. He took on a2. Okay, we were saying here bishop d5 prefers, but okay, he's just taken. I, the main reason I wanted to play a move like bishop d5 is that the bishop on g2 is kind of a monster. Mm -hmm. It overprotects uh, c6, and I, I must admit I wanted to release the, the tension. Uh -huh, okay. I wanted to make sure that pawn on c6 was never dangerous. Makes sense. But okay, uh, Grandilius has played the, the, as I put it, the ambitious, the uh, bishop takes a2. Bishop takes a2, to give himself a, a pawn yeah. in the future. So at least now material is equal, but white has a, a very strong pass pawn here on, mm -hmm. on c6. That we have to deal with somehow. Yes, yes. Rook b2 looks dangerous on the diagonal, but there's, but rook really, is there's uh, really no good way to mm -hmm. uh, to play this knight to attack uh, mm -hmm. the rook. Bishop f6. Rook b7 was played. Mm -hmm. This is sort of position that you always fear in these positions because you you, you and I know that very often this passport on c6 supported by pieces can immediately influence the game and. And it's even worse when the white player has the two bishops because there is no easy blockading square. Okay, in this position, it's easy. You must double rooks. Yeah. But rook somehow white's doing all the pushing. Yeah. And uh, I, I feel that Grandilius looks like has wasted a move yeah. with the uh, bishop takes a2 somehow. Rook e1, bishop came back to e6. But now he calmly just wants yes. to capture... Bishop c5, take on a take a on a7. Seven, and then go back to b6. Mm -hmm. uh, so he tries, what, knight d5? And we have a move. He played he did not d4. Take on, yeah, he did not take on a7, he played d4. 
And that's because, yeah, the knight actually cleared the c3 mm -hmm. square, so if he were to take here, then yeah, bishop, c3 bishop c3 would be, would be quite strong with a double attack. And notably covering the a1 square, so this rook can't protect over here. I, I must admit... Um, so naturally d4, closing a diagonal. And you still got the threat of bishop takes a7? Mm-hmm. And it looks like this could be getting difficult for... Uh, okay, and the wor okay, my knight's on d5. So what happens... Does a6 lose immediately or not? Do I, do I have... Is there some problem? Because I know mm. that bishop b6 is not quite there. And there's this rush to play bishop takes d5 and bishop b6. But I've got to be honest, I'm not so sure. Because when I play bishop takes e6 in return to bishop b6, if you show the line, my apologies, yeah. bishop takes d5, bishop takes d5, bishop b6. I can play bishop takes uh, c6. Yes, you can. So this uh, is my... No, we can't. Oh, no, I can't? Oh, no, I can't. So... So does bishop takes d5 actually win after a6? That would be a bit embarrassing. Uh, Quite possible. Uh, probably, if, if this is working, then After the best, best black can do is try to uh, sack the exchange and hope to hold on here, which you which you might actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, I could I could certainly put the bishop on b five mm -hmm. and hold on. So this is definitely something to look at uh, the direct move. We should take d five. We should be six. Um, or uh, what happens if I take? Am I in time to just cover? No, I'm not because. Again, forcing black to give up the exchange. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a bit... Can we just go one more time? One more time so for yeah. the... So this is the current position. Uh, it's Niels's move. Okay, so uh, a6, just because it's forcing. Bishop mm. takes d5. Bishop takes d5. Bishop b6. Rook takes b7. Pawn takes b7. Rook. Can we do this? Oh, yes. That S seems very to be clever, very clever yes. defensive idea. Yes, this seems to hold for black. Because um, I only say this because Nils is a very strong grandmaster, and I kind of feel that he would not allow such an easy yeah. way to uh, to lose this position. Okay, that's a very, very tactical and very nice defense. Obviously, white does not have to play bishop takes d5, no. but, but if I play a6 and allow bishop takes d5, bishop b6, then I'm lost if I'm, if I'm black. Looks, yeah, it looks tempting. Um. Uh, but you can see Niels Grandil is here uh, double-checking all of his variations. He still has a bit more time. Okay, it seems due to your tactical defense that maybe a6 is playable. Well, there's no direct win, shall we say. But I, okay, I still feel that in this position, yeah. I do not have to play bishop takes no. five. I have a very I pleasant position. Bishop f1. Oh yeah, <laughs> bishop f1, yes. F2. Well. Okay, yeah. but my whole point was that I wanted to put the, a dark squared bishop attacking the rook on c7. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I'm not going to play bishop takes d5 unless I've got bishop b6, so. Yeah, yeah why, why, exactly. I why do not play that unless he finds a force to win. Okay, but uh, in this position, there's no threat for black. So he has to play, white has time to, as you said, to play h4, rook b1. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what black can do to untangle no. himself. Looks more present for white. Looks like, yeah, he can A lot present. improve the position. Um, so we're going to keep moving. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we ha shall we see the leading female player from Germany? Yes, Elizabeth Patz. Who is playing uh, Mikhail Marin. It was very interesting that they uh, actually were pub quiz partners yes. and did very well. Both yeah, he was, he was suffering a little when we saw him. Suffering, it seemed. How and is he probably getting has improved We should have him somewhere on our screens, perhaps, as well. Uh, oh, actually, he's made some progress, because I thought there was this large pawn on c6 was going mm -hmm. to... Uh, so d4, him. we had this we position on a6, as we... We have young Petrov predicted. there, looking, playing quite well, but I thought... Somehow, got we got uh, the two pieces for the... For the rock. Here he took on c7. Trying to advance the pawn. The idea is bishop b7. Mm -hmm. But do we have 
bishop takes a d4. No, not yet. Maybe we did. And now he takes on d4, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, because yeah. Bishop takes d4 and rook takes c7. Mm -hmm. Bishop takes a6, the obvious move. And somehow it looks like he uh, got the eighth pawn. Which it's uh, well, we've discussed this on, uh, in fact, yesterday in the Stefan uh, Christensen game, that very often when uh, it's rook versus bishop and knight, although we normally want the pawns on both sides of the board, mm -hmm. so the rook can be more active, Although we often think that the two bishops should always defeat the rook, if we imagine this position without the, uh, the two light squared bishops, if they got exchanged, uh, theoretically, black should always be okay in this position. But somehow, as you said... But it looks like it tri tricked him somehow here. Yes, now yes, he's, he's playing rook h1. h1. The uh, eight pawn is, is, is... Not long for this one. Nice yes. move, g5 nice here to, uh, to pin it down on h3. And now we can just win it with bishop d2. The knight is still a bit far away from the action, so he tries to bring it in, but Black seems to have done the business here and has two pawns for uh, Rook and two pawns against mm -hmm. two pieces, so uh, we can safely say that Nils is not going to lose here no, and no, he he's might uh, actually... He's going to try for a long time. Try for a long time to actually play for the win. I believe we've missed out one of our top seeds. Ah, Sarkisian. Who, who had a, took a... I believe a half point by yesterday. Is that possible? Uh, no, the day before. I think the day before. He drew yesterday. He drew yesterday. Yeah. And uh, we might uh, flip through his game uh, quite quickly from yeah. the beginning, since we have a little bit of time. He 